Yesterday, Starlink satellites avoid destruction from collision 137 times. That's a lot. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of fireside, that smokiness, guys. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a tech day. I got a bunch of questions about what is going on in Leo when it comes to how packed it is, how many satellites are up there, and what will happen if they start colliding into one another. Well, I did some research and I wanna give this information to you because what I found was really fascinating and I think you will find it fascinating too. Let me first say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, go check them out. Go over to jcristina.com forward slash books. They are free. If you like this video, even in the least, throw it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're already subscribed, click this little button over here. So when I go live, when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And if you want more Starlink content, when you're done watching this video, I have a Starlink playlist. I'll put a link right here. That is about 165, 170 Starlink videos. Helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy, and why. This channel is all about the why. So if you didn't know it, SpaceX began launching satellites back in 2019. And at that time, there was like barely 2,000 of them in operation, in totality, in LEO, or low Earth orbit. Well, as time went by, now we're in 2023, there is an excess of 6,000 satellites in operation in low Earth orbit. And what I found out was over half of that number, 4,000 out of the 6,000 are actually owned and operated by SpaceX. That's a ton. So the issue is simply that low Earth orbit or LEO is becoming crowded. Well, the FCC released some data and I was going through it and I want to give this to you because I thought it was extremely interesting. And what it basically stated was between the years of 2019 and 2023, basically now, what they have found was that SpaceX's satellites had to use some type of evasive maneuver or rerouting maneuver, or rerouting within its orbital path to avoid collision over 50,000 times, 50,000 times. That is a lot. That's in the last four or five years. Now, what makes this even more interesting is what I found out was 50% of these evasive maneuvers that happened, 50% of them happened within the last six months. That is crazy. So if you do the math and you break it down, it comes to about 137 evasive maneuvers occur in LEO by SpaceX's Starlink satellites every single day. 137 times. We have to bear in mind that SpaceX has been already authorized to launch another 7,500 satellites moving forward. And I think at this point, we're going to be starting to get into some uncharted territory where not only SpaceX is launching those 7,500 additional satellites into LEO, but then we have a lot of other countries as well as companies all wanting to participate in this non-terrestrial broadband space race, as I call it. So there's going to be a lot of satellites up there. How will they not collide? Just think about that, 137, let's call it 140 times a Starlink satellite had to maneuver to not get hit and be destroyed in one day. That's crazy, absolutely crazy. So now my question would be, well, what will the landscape look like in LEO or low Earth orbit once Elon Musk has 42,000 satellites, which is his goal, 42,000 satellites in LEO. And then you have the Chinese that want to launch I think it's 13,000, 13,500 satellites for their mega constellation. And then you have companies like OneWeb and then you have Kuiper and all of the other countries that are trying to mimic or replicate, duplicate what Elon Musk is doing with SpaceX Starlink. There's going to be a ton. 
Just think about it, probably in excess of 100,000 up there within the next 10 years. So what happens if these satellites collide into one another or maybe they're destroyed due to debris or maybe purposefully destroyed by another country or something? What happens? Well, there's something called the Kessler effect or the Kessler syndrome. And basically what it states is one satellite blowing up and causing debris can definitely blow up another two satellites. Those two satellites blowing up causing more debris can blow up four satellites and eight and 16 and it becomes a problem, right? It turns into a chain reaction. Now what this also states is that if this was to occur, there would be no way for any satellites to be able to be in low earth orbit because they couldn't maneuver quick enough from all of the debris that's there. That's number one. Number two, there could be a point where now that low earth orbit has become unpassable so that none of our space vehicles, spacecrafts that want to go into outer space to get through our atmosphere, through LEO, through low earth orbit, and then out into outer space can't do it because of the amount of junk and debris that is now orbiting around the earth. The Kessler effect. So this could be a very big problem. So what is being done, right? That's, that's the question here. What is being done? How is NASA addressing this? That's a really good question. And in my research, what I found out was NASA came out with a collision avoidance parameter based on a risk assessment. What this basically means is they come up with this parameter that states that if in one out of 10,000 chance, your vehicle, your satellite is going to collide with an object. It doesn't matter if it's another satellite, it could be debris or anything. If there is a one in 10,000 chance, you must move that vehicle, that satellite into a different orbital path. Basically do some type of evasive maneuver. So the next question is, is SpaceX following the NASA guidelines? And the answer to that is no, they're not. They're actually exceeding those guidelines and not exceeding the guidelines by a little bit. They're exceeding the guidelines by one full order of magnitude more. So instead of there being a possibility of collision of one in 10,000 and then moving your craft, SpaceX Starlink sets their parameters to one in 100,000th of a possibility. That is a big difference. Once again, an entire order of magnitude more. So if we do some calculations here and do the math, we know that 25,000 times SpaceX Starlink has moved one of their satellites in the last six months to avoid collision. But if they are one full order of magnitude more sensitive, what that truly means is they would only have to make these evasive maneuvers 2,500 times, not 25,000 times. That's a big difference, right? A big difference. And that would be in compliance with NASA. So chances are, according to NASA, one in 10,000 is good enough and moving them 2,500 times, they still would have been safe. But instead, they move those craft, they move those satellites 25,000 times. So I got in a little bit deeper, because that's what I do. I want to look into this a little bit more. And NASA, as well as SpaceX, conducted some trials. They were doing some testing on autonomous means of moving their crafts or moving their satellites out of the way, right? Basically performing these evasive maneuvers, but autonomously. So what they did is they created a swarm network. They launched four of these little mini cube sats, cube satellites, they're really small satellites, and they actually work like a mesh network that we would create here locally so that no matter where you are, let's say in your home or in your business, you have internet, right? This is how they work. They work basically together as a whole. And 
Not only are they avoiding debris autonomously, all four of them together, but they're also doing research and they're doing other things and flying in certain patterns and all kinds of other stuff. But once again, they're doing it autonomously and then they're radioing back down to the ground, not for instructions on what to do, but what they have done, what they have seen and the data that they have collected. So this is really interesting. And I think that the the idea of the swarm type of network networks of small satellites is really, really powerful. And if you know how a mesh works, a mesh network, you know that no matter where you go in your business or in your house, you have internet. And the reason being is your phone, let's say if you're on your internet using your phone, it will constantly switch from each one of the nodes, right? On the mesh network. The same thing holds true with these swarms, these tiny satellites. If one goes down or if one is making a maneuver or one is offline or whatever the case is, it makes believe that it wasn't even there and it just keeps conducting business with three instead of four. The same way your mesh network in the home works. If one gets unplugged, it doesn't matter. The other one will pick up the slack. But when you plug that one, that other node, that other AP or access point back in, which would represent a satellite, one of these swarm satellites, immediately says, hey, we have four now. Let's go ahead and get data from all four instead of three. This is really, really cool in my personal opinion. So doing this research, I found that this is really going to be something that will be used for these satellites autonomously staying clear of disaster and falling into that possible Kessler effect where we end up with a uninhabitable or an unpassable low Earth orbit. That would be a major problem. So I guess learning this kind of makes me ask the question, and maybe you could answer this. Understanding the possibility or the severity of low Earth orbit becoming unpassable or even uninhabitable by any satellites, knowing this, but also knowing that SpaceX finds this to not only be serious, but are literally working extremely hard at avoiding this happening. Do you think other countries or maybe even other companies will be as proactive as SpaceX when it comes to collision avoidance? Or do you think the catastrophic nature of the Kessler effect or the Kessler syndrome will actually become a reality? I wanna know from you. Down below, let's have this discussion. I think it's interesting. How about you? If you enjoyed this video, throw it a thumbs up. That would be awesome. Really do appreciate you being here. Finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.